Hey, how's it going? It's Fire, and I'm subbing in for Adam for the first tier list of Season 10 since he's apparently managed to lose his voice. Maybe he just wants to grind more ranked for Season 10 and do his placement games, we'll never know. But remember, as well, for Season 10, we have our desktop app to help you navigate the minefield that is champion select and get an advantage. Check that out in the description down below, but for now, let's jump into our Mobilitics Lowido tier list for patch 10.1. For the top lane, the rest of the champions are going to be Mordekaiser, Yorick, Kled, Singed, and Orn. This patch has seen Quinn move up to A tier, with Garen and Volibear taking a tumble down to B, but apart from that, nothing else has moved. Let's have a chat about Mordekaiser to start this, so he is one of the biggest nerfs in this patch, but we are still keeping him in S tier for now. The nerfs that came in were the passive duration decreased by 1 second, and a movement speed stays at 3% now, instead of scaling 3-9% to over the rest of the game. For an extremely tanky, relatively high damage brute, he's just way too hard to get away from right now, and that is where those nerfs come in. I'm sure we've all been there in a situation where he misses Claw, his Q only to burn you to death by walking next to you, all while healing, and you can't go anywhere because you're locked in his ultimate. Conqueror has been such a huge upgrade in season 10 for him technically you have four heals now three of those are from your runes and you have one in your kit and you also have a shield if that's not enough after you pick up rylai's we don't think the passive change is going to make too much difference because they are slowed by quite a lot already and it is a point where it's just overkill right before that it could limit how much he does we'll keep a close eye on him and we'll visit him again in our update next week one of the most underrated top laners right now and maybe we're gonna have to stop saying that pretty soon is actually on he's remained s tier as well for the start of season 10 and for pretty good reason with dragon Soul in the game, a team's late game can already see a huge boost in power just by getting that, no matter what champions you have on your team. If you combine that with the upgraded items from Orn, all of that extra gold, it makes navigating any late game fight, any situation, much, much harder. Team play champions or tanks are not normally what we recommend for lower ranks because, well, you have to rely on your team to do it, but Orn can ram more than a few top laners out of lane anyway. He has a huge amount of maximum health damage, ideal for anyone a bit tankier, but even if they aren't as tanky, his base damages aren't bad either, so he's still going to kill them. You'll reach a stage at some point during the game where you basically have too much damage without building any damage, but they can't kill you anymore, but you can definitely kill them. Once you upgrade your own items especially, those two you get for free, it can become seriously hard to stop you, you have great engage and provide a huge frontline. Our final top lane champion that I want to talk about today is Fiora. So she is seeing an A tier right now, but that doesn't mean she cannot scale out of control completely. You'll be able to win through your split pushing, which isn't always ideal at lower ranks, but can also be really hard to stop or just the old fashioned group and smash if you have to. You will need like two to three items to really kick into gear, and that can mean sometimes falling behind a little bit early. That is the one downside and why she honestly just isn't and can't be S tier. If you can get those items, especially ahead of the pace of the game, so if you reach two or three items before the other people in the game have, suddenly you control everything, the enemy team is really going to struggle to shut you down, and you can do pretty much whatever you want. Once you have Death Dance as well, on top of that Trinity Force, you're going to have all the damage you could ever ask for, and now all of the healing. Death Dance is so good for Fiora, the bleed passive works amazingly well with just buying you enough time to proc your ultimate to proc those vitals, right? And for that healing to kick in and bring you back up again. For the jungle, our S tier champions are going to be Woik, Marcy, Echo, and Shaco to start Season 10. We again didn't really see many buffs or nerfs as patched to junglers, so our only movement are three moving from A to B tier. Those are Jax, Ramus, and Graves. One thing with junglers is we may see changes come at update next week as players start to play safer. Actually, remember they have wards and start to use them with the new season starting, but we'll have to wait and see there. So whatever happens with the game, there are two junglers who are crazy dominant at lower ranks right now, and the first of those is Warwick. Honestly, he doesn't seem that dangerous, but almost always he's going to win that 1v1 or 2v2 early game because of the damage reduction, the fear, the heal, and the damage. He will basically kill you before you stand any chance of killing him, and that makes him the ideal to counter gank or pick these early fights, and it can make ganking honestly really difficult and dangerous on the enemy team. He can gank decently well on his own uh, with his fear, but no doubt everybody watching this video has flashed and had a Warwick follow them with his cute and yes that is actually a thing he does fall off a bit later into the game but with a lead the good thing is you're going to hit your three items a bit faster than everybody else so you'll have good damage at that point a bunch of health and healing and be kind of like a mini raid boss the good thing this season as well is if we're so strong early game like with warwick it makes fighting for those dragons a bit easier if we can nab the dragon soul with that early lead it makes up for our normal lacking late game so you can still win even with these early game junglers the other way we're doing this is something like Master Yi. You can't really fight for the early dragons, but he can sure cheese them on his own with an early pink ward. Either that or he ints for it every single game, so one of the two at least. 
At higher ranks, he's counter jungled a lot, he's focused down, he's outganked, which can create really big problems. The good thing at lower ranks is that you have an easier time early, and that lets you get your first item quicker and start winning a lot more often. Master Yi is actually a lot like Cassidy in this current meta. If you get to three items, just three really, you stand a crazy good chance of winning the game. In that sense, he's a lot like playing against a Nasus or a Veigar. He's like a ticking time bomb. You have to beat him early or not at all, and that's pretty much how it's going to go for every single game. Games also do last longer at lower ranks, giving you more chance to come online and turn those games around, but actually tanking early, like tanking the dragons, is not a bad strat. From the third dragon into the game, they are all going to be the same element, right? So if the enemy team got the first two while you farmed and you became really powerful, then you could get the remaining four. Those four are all going to be the same element, so they're going to have a crazy strong stacked up buff of whatever it is, and then a dragon soul to completely turn the game around. We're going to round this out with one of the lowest risk junglers we have, which is Zack. He's almost always going to be useful. He can't really carry with damage, but he can hard camp unlike other tank junglers. He's actually pretty decent at creating these early game snowballs at lower ranks. Like your E range is pretty high and you can just sit in a lane. A lot of people do not ward, but even when they do, it doesn't really matter. There are ways, creative ways that Zack can bypass them. The biggest reason you're ever going to pick Zack is just the crazy crowd control. You can buy a lot of time in a team fight for your team. You heal for stupid amounts, so you last a long time that way anyway, but you also stop them from even dealing damage in the first place. One thing to remember is a lot of other lanes right now are just not about tanks. Like, even supports are shifting to mages this patch, and that might mean for junglers to round out comps, it's kind of good to have a tank there in your champion pool. Maybe it's not going to be as fun or as flashy, but it's reliable, it still ganks really well, it's still good for these early leads, and it's good for your LP gains as well. So for the mid lane, our S tier champions are going to be Diana, Nocturne, Fizz, Cassidy, and Rumble. Rumble is our newest addition into the S tier here, and this mostly comes from his early game dominance and super high damage. Mordecai is down to A for now, for mid lane at least. Uh, Lux and Kale both took a hit and are down to B tier, and Galio is taking a trip to the bench for this patch and off the list completely. I think we were all a little bit surprised Diana didn't receive a nerf in 10.1, but if this dominance keeps up, then she honestly likely will. As almost everybody guessed, if you give her a dash in the lane phase after this mini rework that she had, she's going to be a lot, lot stronger, and that's exactly what happened. It isn't just pre-6, you have a huge power spike once you hit that level and get your ultimate. It works pretty much like a fizz, uh, less juky, but a lot more damage, and ulting is icing on the cake to secure those kills. There are a few different builds floating around. We've recommended the Proto Rush one since you go into the most variations after that, so you have a bit more choice. If you go into Morello, it gives you that raw burst damage. Um, Nash's is going to be more damage over time with your passive, and it also makes taking towers better. Rod of Ages can actually also be nabbed up first if you want to instead of Proto Bell, um, especially with Nash's second since you're tankier. It can help you survive longer while you're auto attacking and doing more damage. No doubt she is top tier right now, and she's an easy win to start off your season. You have a really good lane phase, and then you can run around and just have way too much damage to deal with. Next up, Cassidy actually did see a nerf in this patch, but sadly it was only 5 move speed and it made basically no difference. In our opinion, Cassidy is one of the best picks in the game currently, just because if he comes out of lane even, then you're in some serious trouble already. Let alone if he gets a couple of kills or anything, just even is fine. It's on the enemy team to punish you, to deny CS, gang can shut you down. Otherwise they goof, then they let you hit your power spike. Sounds like a joke, getting out of lane phase is a power spike, but actually since you run double scaling, Rod of Ages and Archangels, when they are both completed and stacked, you're way too tanky and and you deal way too much damage. Off those two items, if you get your Lich Bane, it will be how you start one-shot combo people, and you really want to get this instead of Zonyas and just blast through everybody. It doesn't stop for the rest of the game either. At low ranks especially, a lot can happen. Games are really volatile, sometimes you'll pick up a few early kills, and then you've already started to run away with the game. He's one of the only true 1v5 champions left in the game. We're actually just going to have another S tier champion to highlight for our last one for mid lane. A Fizz is a little bit worse in the lane phase, but better as you get into the rest of the game compared to Dyna, but they're actually pretty similar champions. At least early levels, Fizz can kind of get a bit bullied, but from level 6, you have your one-shot skill, and if you hit it, jackpot, you get a kill. Fizz, in my opinion, is also much, much harder to shut down than Diana, so he can carry a little bit better once you reach those team fights. His burst is still really high, and he'll be roaming around the map a lot as well, but he can also avoid a lot of the return damage or crowd control or spells and avoid getting shut down. Being S tier for this little guy is great for any assassin players or people looking to take games into their own hands and really hard carry. It is high risk, high reward. Some games you probably won't do very much and some games you will carry your team completely on your back. Viz racks up more kills than most mid laners, but he's also not the most popular and rarely targeted by nerfs, which means he's ideal to learn and play. Now I've said that, I bet Riot is going to nerf him next patch. I'm sorry if his mains. 
For the bot lane, starting with AD carries, our S tier champions are going to be Jinx, Misfortune, Ash, Jin, Caitlyn, Aphelios, and Yasuo. S tier is a little bit more crowded than any other role right now, but that's just because there are bigger power differences between S and A or B, compared to mid lane where like A is a lot closer to our S tier. Aphelios is our only moving, and it's off to S tier for him after his complete takeover at the end of 9.24b. He did receive some nerfs this patch, so we're going to keep a close eye on him as we go into our update video next week. Misfortune, though, is slowly becoming a tier of her own, honestly. Very little counterplay in her current state, and very easy to pick up and play straight away. She became even more popular in 10.1, but even with these new players flocking to her, she's winning more, which shouldn't really happen. A lot of this actually stems from the fact that she is a little bit easier. She doesn't work like a normal AD carry. A lot of AD carry's damage is normally time gated. Early game, it's a lot about your abilities and they have cooldowns. Then you have to fill the time with your auto attacks afterwards. So it's at least like in the lane phase. Misfortune doesn't really have this issue as much. Like she uses her Q and her E. And then while those are on cooldown, she uses her W. Has a burst window of auto attacking with a really high attack speed. So basically there's not really much downtime. Her burst is also stupidly high since she has a lot of AD early into the game combined with crit. She almost almost has no trade-off of buying items between autos and ability damage because it's boosting both. Jin has also developed into a really top tier AD carry towards the end of preseason and has cemented his place as an S tier AD to start season 10. The reason has mostly been around the new items, the new builds. Stormraiser into three crit cloaks in most games. That gives 100% crit straight away and a huge boost in power. At that point, you will get chunked every single time you try to fight him. He'll likely kill you before he has to reload, so there's no abusing that window or mechanic anymore. Stormraiser has also made his early game a lot stronger, which has brought his mid game up as well because he gets a bigger lead early. And remember, he has a good amount of utility to back all of that damage up. The slow from Stormraiser actually even makes hitting his W even easier, which is set up for him, but also for his team. Once you get rapid fire, you can do that from a lot further away, which is just perfect. But those crit cloaks eventually turn into rapid fire, infinity edge, and normally phantom dancer. So you have 100% crit, you got decent safety and a stupid amount of damage. I also think that Caitlyn is pretty similar to Jin, so let's just round out with her. It's probably the most consistent AD carry out there though, one of the safest, and it's a really good time to learn her. First of all, Season 10 and the new Stormraiser has let her win lane more often, so you have this big slow and more damage straight away, and then into a better mid game. You can also do the same as Jin and rush into crit cloaks. Uh, some people do this instantly into three, some people go Infinity Edge first, either works. Caitlyn can use it a bit more than Jin actually as well, since her headshot damage scales with crit chance, so these cloaks give you more crit, but bigger headshots. No matter what her build is, she always has really high range, a very easy play style of pushing and poking early. She's safe with that range in her net, but there's also a lot more to learn. How to combo properly, um, how to trap and animation cancel can eventually elevate your game. So now while she's strong, you can win more games while you're learning to be a sick K later. For the other half of our bot lane, our supports, our S tier champions are going to be Janna, Leona, Nautilus, Soraka, Zyra, Nami, and Tarek. There were some support item changes in 10.1 that will likely shake things up more over the patch, but for now we have Tarek moving to S tier and Senna up to A tier. Nami had probably the biggest buff of the patch to start season 10, so we're going to kick it off with her today, are changing it so that her E now works with spells as well as auto attacks. This is a massive boost, not just for bot lane, uh, but for her poke with her W as well, for mid game fights too, where she'll start to work with, together with other lanes and the jungler, especially any mages. Not surprisingly, we have seen Nami being played a ton, and she is winning a lot more games than before now, probably the best support. The one downside is that her early game is still on the weaker side. This didn't really fix any of that. She can bully and she can poke quite well, but picks like Blitzcrank, Leona, or Nautilus will make Sushi any chance they get. If she does manage to score a weaker lane phase though, she'll be the one flinging out poke instead, getting to that mid game team fight where she has a good amount of crowd control, healing, speed, and now the extra useful slow and damage buff with her E. Also, one thing that's pretty cool is it is less damage when used by an area of effect spell, but currently the slow still applies, so that means any spell like Xerath's Q can slow and set up the rest of his combo much easier. During the preseason, we saw a lot of tanks and engage and damage flying around, but one of the other changes to support this patch was to the items, basically making them weaker as they upgrade, but stronger earlier. So mages can now poke more and spam out more spells during lane. It's a lot harder to play against those champions like Zyra or Nami that have access to more mana now. With the change to support items in Season 10 in general as well, now that you don't have to spend money to upgrade your item, Zyra can rush into her first proper damage item. Leandries makes such a big difference since your plants can apply it. It is a noticeable increase, a really big one, especially when you get your right eyes after that. Basically, it's like normal Zyra, but she's more of a threat. She's using spells more and can afford more damage in the game, so we expect her to be really good choice to carry herself more to start Season 10. Sadly, the other option for damage is something more like a Nautilus that provides a huge kill lane that can snowball out of control. I say sadly because he's also extremely tanky with a lot of crowd control, so it's hard to even return any damage after he goes in, unless you can shrug it off and wait for Aftershock to be down. 
One hook in most lanes will be a kill, or at least a summoner spell like a flash or a heal, and this meta is a lot about who can win bot lane. With more mages coming back in, it may change to be a bit more passive, scaling and playing around the dragon soul, but for now, diving in, farming kills and feeding your AD and getting those early dragons still seems to be the best way to play the game. Thanks for watching Alorio tier list for patch 10.1. Feel free to leave any comments or questions, and we'll take a look for our update next week. We'll also be releasing a high low tier list and a pick of the patch video, so stay tuned for that and make sure to check out the Mobilistics link in the description to become a better player and climb higher for season 10.